I will say the mastermind behind the mega cast is the one, the only Dave Scott. He's the general manager here at Civic Center TV. Dot com and 89.3 Lakes FM and also the man behind Motown Digital. Dave, thanks. We miss you here in the studio, I have to say. How are you? Ronnie, I got to tell you, I, I miss being there every day. It was the favorite part of my day. and uh, But it's really good to be here with you today and really good to be here to talk about some very good news. But before we get to that, I just want to let you know what a privilege it is to have a veteran broadcaster such as yourself uh, in the chair there at the megacast and the tradition is being um, carried on very well and you know you, you should know that I took a look at the metrics yesterday for the show and uh, the numbers keep going up and up and up through the roof over 50,000 people in the last couple of months have gone to the Civic Center TV website uh, to tune in specifically to you and Tyler and the megacast you guys are doing a great job. Well, I don't think it's really us. I think it's our guest that we're able to get on the show. Jake, Larry, and the entire team doing an amazing job getting everyone here to try to uh, come in and inform the public. Dave, you know, we talked before you even brought me on. The one thing I like about this is the fact that we are able to do long form interviews with so many people and, and the public is getting them in its entirety because as a reporter you take snippets a sound bite is like eight to 12 seconds so you're taking a 20 30 minute interview and putting it down to 130 so in this regard this is really being transparent with the public and letting them know all the information that they need because six months into this we are still going i thought we would be over this by now but we're not but not only are we having to pivot? The public is having to pivot. This is impacting all of our lives. How has it impacted you? Well, um, it's impacted me tremendously, but let me just follow up to your comment quickly and let you know that um, it is unusual what we do in the broadcasting space where everything is condensed down to short little sound bites. You know, as a television reporter, it's particularly acute in the radio broadcasting area. Um, you know, I talked to folks like Paul W. Smith and the few times I've run into him and talked to him about some of the radio efforts I've worked on over the years. He always says, well, you know, it, it's just you're, you guys are so lucky that you have a half an hour to talk to a guest. And it, it lets us get out of the way and let our guests talk without having to interrupt them because we have an agenda or because, uh, more importantly, we don't have the time. And when you get out of the way and you just let people talk then you learn things that you wouldn't otherwise learn because people just get comfortable and they freelance and they they're sharing their stories and um, I really like the flow of that. Um, to your question, um, I I've been very lucky. Uh, we've been doing some amazing things at Civic Center TV and with the MegaCast and then uh, Motown Digital, the company that I own that I'm in our offices in Troy today. Uh, we have become the state's leading producer of virtual conferences. So um, we're right in the middle of all of this, and uh, we're doing the best we can to help people um, get through this crisis as their lifestyles change a little bit at home, at work, and, and in the meeting world and convention world where I, where I uh, am busy when I'm not working on television. Dave, I have a question. Do you think virtual conferences are going to stick around post-pandemic? Uh, I appreciate you asking that. Um, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be an evolution. So first thing that happened after March, the last event we did in person was a huge event at uh, at TCF, the former Cobo Hall, uh, for Blue Cross Blue Shield and all organizations. It was their event the last day before everything was shut down. And we had another event, our, our State of the Communities in West Bloomfield, we did at Abbott with no one in the room. So uh, first thing that happened is the audiences went away and then the, the venues were completely shut down and we all started working at home. Um, over the past several months, we've introduced this concept called virtual conferences. And for a lot of people, it's been Zoom meetings and uh, on the municipal meeting front, that's been enormously helpful. Uh, if you have a proceeding in court, you might be doing it via Zoom. Uh, municipalities are conducting business. 
schools are conducting business. Students are going to school versus these uh, using these toolkits. But the next level of all this is a thing called the virtual conference, which is like a traditional conference. It's a multi-year, multi-faceted event. It all happens online with breakout rooms, general sessions, chat, video, expo halls, the whole thing. And and now we're implementing those because we're very limited in about uh, on the number of people we can get into rooms. But the next evolution of that is um, combining the two into what are called hybrid events, where you might have some people on site and some people at home. And eventually we're going to get closer to having more people in the rooms. But no, I, I, I think this technology is here with us. It's, it's going to be uh, a change to our culture. Uh, people will be able to, who formerly had to go to the office, are going to work at home. People who formerly traveled to meetings are going to be able to conduct their meetings over the internet. But, you know, people still want to press the flash, get together and shake hands. And I don't see that going away, but there's going to be a virtual component to, to interaction, human interaction going forward. Dave, transitioning back to some of what we're doing here, one of the hallmarks of our operation in the fall is coverage of high school football with West Bloomfield High School and their incredibly talented team over there. And unfortunately, we lost that season earlier on with a decision by the MHSAA, but some good news recently when they did reverse that decision and, and, uh, re and resume the regular season, which will begin next week and uh, our high executive staff here at Civic Center TV and at the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission has some uh, interesting new efforts that are coming into our coverage this year. Would you like to discuss that a little bit? Yeah, well, I just want to say one thing about this evolution. It took me totally by surprise. So I want you to know, Tyler, that uh, that interview that we did with Pat Watson, the superintendent of schools, former principal of West Bloomfield, now superintendent of schools in Bloomfield Hills, uh, the most prolific thing anyone has said to me in the last six months, and I say it every day to people as I quote Pat Watson, and I say, hope is not a plan. My staff is getting sick and tired of me saying yeah. that and quoting Pat. But uh, it, it couldn't be more true with high school football. We had a plan. We were hoping for the best. Then we kind of thought the worst. And now, to the surprise and shock of everybody, the governor has cleared the way in the MHSAA Michigan High School Athletic Association has football approved and it's starting next weekend. So um, the rules are really interesting. And actually, um, you're not going to be able to go to the high school football game at West Louisville High School on Orchard Lake Road unless you're a parent of one of the athletes. The athletes, a new rule came out. I'm sure you've already reported this. It says the athletes are going to have to wear masks for any inner um, scholastic event with the exception of swimming. So. <laughs> Uh, high school football and the other sports are going to be played with masks on. So we're going to have a bunch of masked football players on Friday nights um, for the next several weeks playing high school football. And then an unusual twist in the season this year, every team that participates will get into at least the first round of the tournament. So we'll have at least seven games. As you mentioned, Tyler, West Bloomfield has an amazing program. We have a number of students that are going to Big Ten universities that we didn't think we were going to be able to watch play football their senior year. And had they moved the season to spring, we talked to Ron Bellamy, coach of the Lakers earlier, and he said we would have lost those seniors because come springtime, the seniors are already engaged in major Big Ten programs at Michigan, Michigan State, and, and other um, collegiate programs. So good news all the way around, except for the fact that that the fans won't be able to be there in attendance. So the cable commission, Tyler, has given us instructions. They say, Dave, Tyler, get out there and do those football games and put them on television, put them on TV live. So the MHSAA, who traditionally, and I don't want to go down this path too far because it isn't a pretty one, have made it impossible for us to put these games on television live. However, they're out of the way. They want these games broadcast. They want people to see it. So the great news, Tyler, is you and I next Friday night are heading over to Oak Park. Should they welcome us and we'll do the game on the radio as we did all of our games last year. And subsequent away games will at least be broadcast on the radio. And all the home games from Orchard Lake Road and West Louisville High School, the home of the Swamp will be live on television on Civic Center TV and WBTV and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good season. Six game, six regular season games. Every team makes the playoffs. We're gonna see a, I think we're gonna see a lot more of the depth of the West Bloomfield Lakers team this year be playing as they adjust to this new schedule and to get everybody's uh, everybody's football legs back under them. And there's so much talent on this team. I mean, led of course by running back, wide receiver, wildcat quarterback. Just a flex player, Donovan Edwards, who's got national attention from Power 5 schools. A lot of veteran leadership coming back on the defensive side. Gavin Hardiman, Maxwell Hairston, who just committed to the University of Kentucky, are among some of the many players. And then interior and intangible guys like uh, like their center, Caden Halliburton, guard Osian Harris, and then special teams, both their kicker, Jake, uh, Jake Ward, and their punter, Sammy Lafada are back this year as well. So a really solid team coming out for the Lakers. We are loaded, and by anyone's assessment, the West Longfield Lakers are clearly a team that not only can go all the way, is expected to go all the way. And the bugaboo the last couple of years, Tyler, you know, both, you and I both broadcast heartbreaking games in Belleville as we couldn't get past our regional foe. Hopefully uh, the Lakers will get there, but... With the shortened schedule and the opponents that just happen to line up, this is an unbelievable high school football season for the Lakers, massively competitive. So even though we have a great team, this is not going to be a cakewalk. We start out at Oak Park, one of the best programs in all the state, um, next Friday night. Then Southfield A&T, an amazing program that continues to get better, especially as they combine the two Southfield schools. Clarkston, perennial state championship favorite, we're on the road up at Clarkston, and then this is kind of cool. We end the season with three home games. We have Oxford, Rochester, Adams, and then Lake Orion wrapping up the season. And, Tyler, I think the most exciting game we had last year was Lake Orion, who when we faced them had not lost a game all season. It was a, a tough game. Lakers were down. They fought their way back. The rain and lightning came in and suspended the game, and it, it took two nights of football for the Lakers to escape with a victory over the then uh, – a Lake Orion team that was undefeated, and uh, that set the way for a strong entry into the postseason and had a great season for the Lakers. But I think at, down to the individual man and uh, and coach on that team, I think they were all disappointed that they couldn't get through the regional final. And uh, there's some scores to be settled, so it's going to be a fun year. It absolutely will. A really tough schedule for the Lakers, six six matchups that could honestly go either way it'll be an exciting football season dave anything else for us today no i just want to let people know that the high school athletic association and the schools in this state have their own television network and games will be streaming it's a fee-based system and it uses a single camera at the high school and we could have just let that go and use that but um we decided and the cable commission um is providing us the support to broadcast these games with two cameras. We're not, you know, I mean, it, you know, ESPN's not coming in to do the games. I don't know. We're going to have a lot of technical things and replays and stuff, but you're going to get an excellent view of the game produced up with our late live play-by-play, -play, and we're going to be streaming it for free. It's going to be on Civic Center TV for free. It's going to be all over. Whoop, I don't see why we can't put it on Facebook Live for free. Not a penny. And we just, I hope you set up viewing parties around West Bloomfield because this could be the year in this COVID-19 year that the West Bloomfield Lakers go all the way and you're not going to want to miss a second. Absolutely, Dave. Must see TV and must see radio here in the West Bloomfield area.